Hey everybody, this is Josh Peak. I'm the host of the Josh Peak Show, and today we have a, a special guest on. I'm really excited about this podcast because I was looking for and seeking out someone who could explain uh, to my audience uh, that spans all over the globe what NFTs are. That's the big craze right now. Uh, but we've known about them for years, but I wanted someone who could really explain it in detail. Uh, I brought on uh, this guest is Paul Caldwell. He's the uh, chairman and CEO of, Paul, of Caldwell Soames. Um, he's got a platform called OG2D, and in this uh, and in this show, we talk about what what are NFTs. Uh, define what an NFT is. Uh, we also talk about the future of NFTs, how they're going to be used, um, make it more professional and commercialized, defragment uh, basically. Uh, where the marketplace is, and then, um, you know, we talk about the future of crypto. Uh, we also talk about uh, how are you going to be able to use crypto in a timely manner. So he's also um, part with a company called OG Pay. Um, it's it's amazing. So you're really going to love this show. He he breaks it down in such a way that anyone can understand it, and talks about how how people can get involved in it. So. Uh, you're really going to like this. Make sure that you go to iTunes, Spotify, um, Google Play, or anywhere that you can find the Josh Peak Show. Uh, please rate it a five, and please leave a review on there and talk about you know in that review, um, you know if there's something else that you want or you're looking forward to, uh, you'd want me to talk about or bring or, or a guest to bring on. Just let me know. Uh, also, you can find all of my podcast at joshpeak.com. Um, on social media, you can find me pretty much anywhere uh, at Josh Peak, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. And then you can find me on on YouTube as well. Uh, I got a real special podcast coming up, talking about how a business mentor of mine, he kind of went away a- out of the marketing space, and then he came back, and he's got almost a million of followers on TikTok. We're going to be talking about that next. So enjoy this show. Uh, with Paul Caldwell. We're talking about NFTs and crypto. Josh Peak Show. Hey everybody, this is Josh Peak. Welcome to the Josh Peak Show. Uh, we have a podcast uh, every single week and uh, today is going to be uh, a fun one. I think there's a lot of people that are wanting to get to know and understand NFTs, uh, the cryptocurrency space. And um, and so I brought on a special guest, Paul Caldwell. Hey, Paul, how are you doing today? Good, Josh. How are you? I'm doing good. So uh, why well, met you first in Las Vegas? Uh, I remember that. I remember. That was a good time and um, learned a lot. I got, that was my first introduction really to the blockchain, under, starting to understand it. And, I see. Uh, yeah. I got really excited uh, when you were talking about it. But Paul is chairman and CEO of Caldwell Soames, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about NFTs uh, as well as he's got some special projects that that I've started to understand a little bit. But, um, well, let's talk about OG2D. Um, let's talk about that first. Can you okay. kind of explain what that is and, and sure. uh, kind of where it's going? Sure. OG2D is a, a OG2D.com is a, is an NFT uh, marketplace. Yep. Um, in the in the most traditional sense of it, you know, NFT that kind of comes off the tongue real easy, Josh. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, it's um, it's easy to say. It's like pff, NFT, right? right. It just it comes off the tongue real easy. But really, if you think about what a non fungible token is, yes. And then you start to understand it from a business point of view and it gets to be very interesting. So our firm here is, you know, we're private equity group. We have a publicly traded enterprise fund and a, and a privately held companies fund and uh, original digital corporation, which owns this, uh, which has in its portfolio or in its, uh, in its uh, programs, the OG2D platform uh, marketplace. And so, uh, I've come to over the last couple of years really understand uh, these non-fungible tokens, what they're all about, really. And it kind of started out, and they still are to today, more of a um, uh, where you can you can. 
buy and sell and trade. So it's, it's a collectibles thing. The, 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 a big part of it is collectibles. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are more and more, it's more and more of a movement towards um, really towards monetizing other parts of, of, of businesses and more professionalizing it beyond just uh, collectibles. And then even in the collectible space, so I don't want to belittle collectibles in any way. Um, even in the collectible space, it's getting more and more uh, professionalized and mm-hmm. NFTs are becoming more and more integral uh, beyond just um, beyond just NFT marketplaces like OG2D, um, becoming more integral in things like games, uh, gaming and online games uh, where components of the games, you know, the the gun or the island or the or the the clothing that uh, a, a particular player is wearing can be a an nft um and that makes it transportable so what if you could think about what if you could have a have a pair of sneakers let's mm-hmm. say that you got in one game that you that you purchased in one game and let's say it's an nft what if you could take those pair of sneakers and now through an authentication process you could now wear the same sneakers in another game not even built by the same game developer because there's a standardization around authentication of non-fungible tokens regardless of which blockchain they're minted on so mm-hmm. there's a lot of that going on in the space right now it, that, that's what i mean by it's becoming more mature it's becoming yeah. more consolidated and it's in its value proposition it's 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 been fragmented like crazy it's not really been organized or consolidated now you're really starting to see value organizing and value consolidating um to really drive business value, create real value. Um, OG2D's big time uh, tied into that. So its business model is based on OG. OG means original to the number two, original to digital OG2D. Yeah. So there's an authentication process. There's a lot that goes on in that marketplace that maybe doesn't go on in others. And it uses Algorand. Has a, we have a partnership with Algorand and it uses the Algorand blockchain to mint these NFTs because Algorand blockchain has some unique aspects to it um, in that it allows for larger file sizes mm-hmm. uh, to still be on chain and it allows for integration with off chain file storage very seamlessly without um, without losing any security or, or any of that. And it also allows for um, fungible attributes to be built into non fungible tokens. So you can do some really creative things, especially in entertainment space. And the OG 2D is doing that through their uh, their series drop model, where they'll drop a series six weeks, once a week for six weeks, creates a series. End of six weeks, you collect all of them. You can stitch that together and have a 30-minute audio book or nice. e-book or cartoon or whatever, that, that sort of thing. So for the lame, for this, someone who's just getting started, they're wanting to invest in these NFTs. I mean, what we're seeing now, obviously, is you'll see these weird looking uh, photos or, or drawings, like I said, of apes and of these other, and they're going for a ton of money, you know, and, and people don't think understands why, what's driving that, you know? And so, yep. and, and you see on Facebook, some you're now, I am seeing anyway, I'm seeing more and more people that were, they were internet marketers. Now they're coming in the NFT space and it's almost like, um, well, look at me, I'm in the NFT space and you're not yet type of mentality yeah but, but they have a hard time educating people on facebook or social media outlets about really what's going on almost trying to keep it a little secret if you would maybe mm-hmm. maybe that's yeah. trying maybe what they're trying to do is create value for their membership or whatever they're doing um so how do you break it down to just the some some person who works he's a landscaper but he wants to get involved with with nfts what how would you I mean, I guess probably the OG 2D website would probably explain it uh, or because I've seen your website. There are videos there. But how would you yeah. bring some newbie and say, this is really what it is. This is this is and this is what it's going to be. Um, this is what it's going to look like in the future. First of all, I, Josh, that's a great question. Um, I would encourage the landscaper to, um, you know, it's it. it, it I think it's a buyer beware environment, right? I mean, sure. I everything is. I and I really discourage people from doing anything, making any investments, or doing anything that involves their money in any yeah. way, 
um, I discourage them from doing it until they understand why they'd even want to. What, what's exactly. the point of it? You know, if you're just going to get caught up in the buzz and throw some money at some NFTs, you know, OK, if you just want to be able to say I have NFTs, you know, you have them, I right. have them, you know, and it's that kind of thing. OK, but I certainly don't and would never recommend that if someone's really interested, though, in in these for collectible purposes, we're wondering why the heck they, they see something on an email or a or a news post or a press release that this NFT of this green haired dragon, you know, spewing fire just sold out in yeah. 30 minutes for $60 million. Um, what is that all about? People's yeah. mentality starts to become, well, how do I get my little piece of that $60 million? Can I, how, how do I get that? How yep. do I participate? And I think that's what we see a lot of right now. And that's why I said it's just fragmented. It's been all over the, the place. The reason we've invested in the space in our portfolio um, is because we want to be part of that consolidation, that professionalization, that organization. And we really, our, our teams over the ODC teams, those guys, they understand this stuff. Those folks understand it so well. Um, I said those guys, I should have said those folks because a couple of gals in there, I want to be yeah. politically <laughs> correct. Um, right. But at the end of the day, really brilliant folks over there and they get that, right? So what I would tell the landscaper is, listen, if you're into collectibles, you really, you really have some things that you love and maybe you collect anyway. If you collect baseball cards, maybe it's mm -hmm. kind of like that. If you collect Pokemon cards, it's kind of like that in a, in a digital environment. So someone creates something. So there's number one, there's a creator that's that creates a piece of content. Then there's the context that the content resides in that context in the NFT world happens to be a token. Mm -hmm. The content resides inside. It's part of this token. And then what happens is that rests in uh, an NFT marketplace. Or as I mentioned earlier, that maybe that rests in a video game, you know, wherever. Um, and it has a value to it. But the key to it is when the collectible side, it's about scarcity. It's about authenticity. You know, if, if it's scarce and there's only one or there's mm -hmm. only 10, or there's only 100, how do you get yours? And then what's the value of that going forward? Because there's secondary markets. So on the one hand, you have speculators. You have a lot of people that have, that have made a tremendous amount of cryptocurrency, like Ethereum, for example. And, and most NFT marketplaces are minted on Ethereum or an Ethereum fork, th these kinds of things. OG2D went a different direction because we don't want to be limited. Uh, we don't, and, and they don't want to be limited. We don't want them to be limited. Um, Algorand offered a, a much better solution to where the commerce layer, you could still buy an NFT and OG2D that's minted in Algorand and you can still pay for it with Ethereum. You can still nice. pay for it with your credit card. You don't even need to be in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, less than 15% of the population in the United States ever even has cryptocurrency or ever is considered cryptocurrency. But what if they still wanted to buy NFT? Well, if they can't because they don't have the crypto, then they're out of the game. Yep. So you'll notice at OG2D, you can still use your credit card. You can use your cryptocurrencies um, at, the, at the commerce layer and still enjoy that collectible, that Algorand minted collectible. You still have a wallet that's built to hold that collectible and it's transferable. Yeah. So it's a very interesting way they've deployed the technology over there, I think, at OD. Uh, ODC through the uh, OG2D uh, uh, marketplace. But so you have these speculators that have all this profit in these cryptocurrencies. Um, you know, they bought Ethereum at 80 bucks. Yep. <laughs> you know, or they bought Bitcoin at 400 or a thousand or something. And here you go. And all of a sudden, although Bitcoin's not typically used in the NFT space because it, it, you don't mitten it, but or OG2D decided that they should separate the commerce layer from the from everything else. And so um, that's how we can use Algorand blockchain to mint and get extremely efficient, super fast speeds, low cost in fees, low, low, low gas fees, some 100 times less than, for example, Ethereum. But at the same time, have the value proposition for the customer. 
It's a, so it's a market oriented thing. So on the one hand, you have these speculators that'll that'll just go use their profits on Ethereum and drive the prices of these NFTs way up and the value way up, and they'll sell a hundred out for a thousand dollars each in fifteen seconds. Yep. Um, and that's the exciting story. So you have the speculators. Then you have the revenue, the the people that are looking for revenue opportunities, and what they'll do is they'll go get an NFT that they think is really going to catch fire, and they'll go pay twenty bucks for it. Mm -hmm. And they'll get it and they'll put it up into one of the secondary marketplaces and they'll put it or they'll market for sale. Mm -hmm. And and you see a lot of that happening. That's that's been going on for a long time. It's not well long in, in relative terms in this in this digital world we live in today, Josh, yeah. maybe what, a year, <laughs> 18 months. Um, but at the same time, I think the those people, they look at it as a revenue generator because they'll buy it for 20 bucks. They'll put it in the secondary market, and if it's the, if it's created a value there for two hundred bucks, they'll put it up there and they'll sell it in secondary market, and they create revenue. They create income that way. Yeah, um, they look at it as they can create a cryptocurrency based income stream that way through buying and selling NFTs in secondary markets. So you basically so basically have buying and flipping in a sense, right? Yeah, it's like, exactly that's it. Exactly, yeah. it's like yeah. flipping it. Um, but they can do it again and again because there's so many NFTs out there. If they pick the right ones, they can go buy for 200 bucks. They could buy 10 and they could list them all up for sale in, in a secondary market and, you know, sell some of them today, maybe some next week. Who knows? But they, these people typically have a lot of things up there for sale at any particular time in these um, secondary NFT marketplaces. Sure. So that's, that's a good that's, explanation. I, I really yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, what do you see the futures like of NFTs? Where do you see it going? I mean, obviously, you're what I like about what you guys are doing is you're professionalizing it. Like you said, uh, you're making it more you're consolidating it and making it more of a um, not as fragmented, probably. Um, so w where do you see the future of NFTs going? I see the I see the value of the non-fungible token being used um, in, a, in a number of, I think, really important ways. I think they have an impact. They can have a social impact. I believe that. They can have a meaningful social impact. Um, OG2D is working with a couple of cities, large U.S. cities, who years ago spent a lot of money on sculptures and all of this to create art parks and sculpture gardens, that kind of thing. And... Um, and they, that has to go into their city budget, for example, to um, keep it up, right? Some have to pay someone to keep the little pond clean, the sculpture garden, the art sure. park, and sweep the ground and throw away the trash, and keep the seat, you know, the benches painted, all that stuff. Um, but there's an upkeep cost. But what if they, what if they created? Um, and with OG2D, what they're doing is they're they're creating digital 3D scans of these sculptures creating nfts and then og2d will list these nfts as unique um mm -hmm. one of a kind originals and then there will be digital equivalents of um equivalents of like a, when an artist makes a painting um they'll make a painting and then they'll make 100 prints and you'll see one of 100 or 20 of 100 that sort of yeah. thing and they'll do that and then they'll take the revenue that's generated from those nft sales and should do a rev share with the city so the city can use that money to offset defray some of the costs associated with keeping that art park or that sculpture garden um clean and interesting current. and yeah. so it really has an impact socially that way because then it gets a nice clean art park and sculpture garden and it had an effect for that city and the, and the people so there's this social dynamic that comes into play um with Algorand, in that regard, you also have the fact that it's zero carbon neutral. So we work really hard to make sure that it's a it's a zero or a negative carbon situation over at OG2D. Um, th th there's an importance there. You know, I've never been really big on, you know, I'm like, I'm not the guy that's going to run out the door in the morning and go hug a tree before I get yeah. in, the, in the car. Um, uh, however, I will tell you that uh, there are some serious impacts, some positive impact. Uh, that, that, that you can have as a company when you start just thinking a little bit that way around sustainability. Mm -hmm. So that's important. And then there's the other uh, side of the business, which is the professional side of the business. Uh, you could see companies not, not NFTing their company, 
but they could NFT their cash flow. Um, not unlike STOs. There's a lot of there are a lot of STO listings now that are backed up going into SPACs and everything else these days. I mean, it's it's for the financial markets, um, security token offerings are going to grow. They've they've typically been the laggard, right? I mean, if you compare the STO, which is this, you know, that's like the SEC approved security token offering. Yeah. So like an I a true IPO, but in the crypto space, let's say, or in the digital space. Um, if you compare that to the DEX, the distributed exchange offerings, which are the modern day equivalent of the ICO mm -hmm. right? yes. from, from days of old. Um, and there was so much scam and so much, so many people taking advantage of and they lost money and it, it, it just terrible kind of things happen. Um, and, and in that DEX space, sometimes I think probably still does, but I see it getting organized. I see more regulation coming in. I don't think that's a negative thing. I think that's a positive thing when it comes to um, offering people things that require them to use their money. It's yeah. certainly good to have a degree of regulatory compliance in there that someone has to adhere to. Otherwise, you know, gee zooks, you could have somebody listing a token, you know, from from the penitentiary or something oh, yeah. through a buddy and pretty soon you got people actually buying this stuff true and um, and then all kinds of scams that get that get can get bolted onto those things so i think the professionalization the consolidation organization and then um regulation uh will will find its way in and i see the court then the final thing i would say josh is the corporate use of nfts yep um non-fungible tokens in the uh, legal departments of firms for intellectual property. Interesting. Yeah. Um, use for NFTs when you could, you could NFT a patent, but you could have smart contracts associated with that to be able to do really interesting things in the way you could license then portions of a patent instead of nice. a whole patent. Um, so large companies are, are, are looking at that and then, and then, and then the insurance industry with uh, using NFTs with art pieces that they can then uh, put um, um, Internet of Things, IoT devices on a painting, for example. Mm -hmm. And and that that IoT device on the back of that painting, that NFC chip or whatever, can report that painting's environment. So it becomes like a verb instead of a noun, the painting. And... Um, what we're seeing, what we're doing, the, the OG2D team is doing is they have this authenticity protocol that they use um, where they put an NFC chip on a painting, the NFT it, and then, um, but that IoT device will report humidity, um, will report temperature, where that paint, so if that painting is part of your insurance, it's, it's part of what you schedule on your, on your homeowner's insurance, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if that painting gets in a really bad environment, all of a sudden the system is reporting that and all of a sudden an alert goes up and the insurance company gets a notification and maybe the homeowner gets a notification that, hey, we need to, we need to turn the air conditioning down because you're going to melt the paint. That's an extreme yeah. example, right? Yeah. But but one of the main reasons that um, for art to be lost and, and one of the main reasons for um, insurance companies to have huge payouts is water damage in museums and, and things like that. So there's a whole, there's a whole professional business aspects to NFTs that hasn't really found its way into the mainstream at all. But it's all, it's all around the edges right now. Mm -hmm. But it's being consolidated, and so I'm very enthusiastic that we're in so early on, um, on the technology, but early enough to be able to create the next version of how how it's used. Um, that's that's really what's uh, what has me keenly. I mean, we're considered value investors, right? Yeah. And here we are in the NFT space with the, an NFT marketplace and and um, and other things like OG Pay, which is in, in that same ODC inside the same original digital corporation. That that portfolio. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about next was the OG Pay. But before I do that, you said something that was really interesting. The the SPACs. So that's S P A C, right? Yeah. Okay. So. That's and I've just started to really started to educate myself a little bit in that area. You see what Donald Trump, right? Who just, I guess, started his own social uh, media or social company, somehow tied to a, a SPAC. And then and now I think it was last night, uh, Black Rifle Company 
is now talking about uh, going that going that way too. What so? What is a SPAC? It, I mean, explain that just a little bit. We don't have to go too long, but it's it's think of it as a special purpose type of a of a company of an entity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so you have this spacking, you know, spacking yes. that goes on. Anyway, it's a way to create a special purpose entity and to raise money through the public currency, mm-hmm. um, public markets. And you can you can spack and you can list into Nasdaq and you can do these various things. And it's a way to create uh, liquidity. Now, historically, in, in my mind, I couldn't believe last year and yeah, really starting in 2019, how spacks. I mean, because our our firm has been we we've been. Uh, value investor since 1992, um, SPACs have always been bad news. And in, in my, it was a bad word in, yeah. in my, my world because people would, they would um, reverse, uh, reverse list. They get a shelf company and they do a reverse into the, into the markets. And they, then you'd have this uh, small company that would be a OTC company and, you know, selling for, you know, one cent yep. per share. I mean, and then they would, try to really grow it and then they they get it to 30 cents per share and that's a huge difference on yeah huge hundreds of millions of shares right i just always stayed away from that because i didn't understand that game really Mm -hmm. and i wanted to i never wanted to be part of the sweatshop crowd selling you know making banging the phones every day selling mary smith uh 100 shares of something and taking her retirement money i just i just never felt clean about that i never felt good about that so we stayed way far away from that um in in our firm now um with with reg a and then reg a plus that came in and then there's all these new um um, variants of different regulations that you can use for listing purposes Mm -hmm. SPACs have become since like 2019 extremely attractive now and you just see legit i mean major legit firms um, spacking and there's this process called despacking, and that's how you you then are going to um, get to your your liquidity path. Um, maybe that's Nasdaq or whatever, and then so it's a it's a means to an end to liquidity, basically. Okay. Yep. That's that's what I was I, when Trump released this social media platform, or he is starting it, and he tied to a, a spac. So and just kind of I think the way you said, it, I think that's almost what they would say that was going on, which is probably, uh, he, he's making good moves right now. But um, so the other thing is the OG pay. That's what's interesting to me. Um, you know, I've talked to Daryl obviously about that. Um, and that's, that's going to be, that's gonna, that may be a game changer uh, in a little bit. So explain uh, to my crowd, my, the people listening, what is OG pay? Um, and what what can you do with it? I mean, because I know there's a lot of people going, well, how do I, how do I pay, like for a meal, or how do I pay for whatever that I wanted to pay uh, using my crypto? Because that's always been the thing that you know it's hard to go buy something, uh, you know, uh, with with crypto. It's it's hard to buy a meal or a, you know, just whatever clothes with crypto. Uh, right. right, right. So so with OG Pay, kind of explain that a little bit. Yeah. So. I wanted to stay away. Also, we always want to we want to we want to be invested in technology. So, in our space, back in 2016, it was fintech and it was decentralized finance. And how do we get into that space? And how do we find sort of a a platform investment we can use to develop on? Or these kinds of things. These were conversations inside our firm uh, for our fund, just for for capital deployment mm-hmm. purposes. Um, and, and we wanted to treat it as sort of a, as a platform investment so we could grow into that over a period of years and really build a nice book of business um, inside the portfolio around uh, fintech and DeFi and th- things like that. Um, so it wasn't necessarily about cryptocurrencies at the time or what actually wasn't anything about cryptocurrencies, but it was about blockchain. So, um, so we own now Blockchain Data Corporation inside the, um, our, our portfolio. Um, and we started building on some of these uh, food trusts and things like that. We got we got involved in that, and then we started actually deploying those technologies inside some of our portfolio companies that we invest in. We invest in brands companies. We have a we have uh, two different sides of the house: public enterprise fund and private fund, private companies fund. So we try to pollinate value across them as much as we can. And um, Josh, we started getting into this. Um, 
fintech and we started to realize, wow, there are huge gaps in this in this space. It's like, okay, so you can have a, a mobile wallet where you put your cash, mm-hmm. but that wasn't, I didn't really excite me because I could already do that with my app from the bank yep. on my phone and I had PayPal on my phone and I had, you know, I had all these things already on my phone. So I couldn't figure out, well, you know, where's the value? What, why would somebody want to do this? There's already all this stuff you can do. Right. Um, but of course that's never the way to look at, at the, if you want to, if you want to create the future, you can't look at the now and say, okay, that's good enough. You have to look at the now and say, this is awful. I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's a kid out there somewhere, Josh, it's 15 years old, sitting in his bedroom at night after school, looking at his brand spanking new iPhone 13 and saying, this is terrible. I can do better than this. I hope and that'll, my son. <laughs> that'll, 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 be, that'll be the kid that changes the world, right? right? Because he's not happy, not satisfied with whatever it is today. So we look at things a lot that way. So we found these gaps. We thought, wow, this, this stuff they're calling fintech really doesn't, if you really apply it now to the consumer, go out in the marketplace and see how, you know, how, how Josh Peake can use this and really feel like he got value from it. That wasn't, that didn't exist. It just didn't exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have PayPal. So what? I mean, that was great when it was when it was new and when it was innovative. And we also st- saw a whole bunch of companies stuck in disruption. So we saw innovation happening. And you saw it all over the press about fintech and DeFi and all that crypto and everything. Right. And then I'm talking about 2015, 16 time frame, 17 time frame. Then you saw what was happening that was going to be the, the there's, those were going to be the waves, right? To mm-hmm. ride for the future. Then you saw um, on top of that coming in at the, at kind of at the same time, all this conversation about disruption yep. because Uber is a good example of innovation and disruption. Yep. Uh, and people were kind of stuck on that. Uber innovated to disrupt the taxi business and create the ride share space. Right. All right. So that was innovative and it was disruptive, but we started thinking about that. Well, is it really? I mean, it does it really matter these days to be disruptive? So if you get on any quarterly conference call for any corporation these days, they always that the the CEO when he's talking or or maybe you know the COO, whoever's whoever's on the call, usually not the CFO when he's talking about the numbers, yep. but they always talk about disruption. Um, just like they used to always talk about innovation. Yep. Well, we think both innovation and disruption are a little passe. Like that, that should just automatically be baked in today. We think the next level of that is transformation. Mm. And we think that's what Uber really did. What Uber really did is it innovated, it upwardly disrupted for the purpose of transforming how people think about something as simple as taking a ride. Yeah. Very simple thing. Billions of dollars shifted. So now you have all these people out there with these mobile phones and you have all this opportunity out there with technology around fintech and decentralized finance and opportunities and cryptocurrencies and um, so on and all kinds of digital assets being built out and developed and NFTs and uh, you know fungible baskets, all these different things. Um, wow. Let's, so we really need to think about that. So what we did was we, we started to build on a, on a, process of acquiring and investing in technologies related to fintech mm-hmm. and then we ended up with a platform that was a, initially just a, a basic payments platform where you have a mobile wallet and you could have a, a, a visa debit card associated with it and then that evolved into the next generation and now we're 30 some months into this process um not quite three years but uh, yeah I, I guess about three years um and, and all of a sudden, you know, we wake up and now I have this wonderful um, uh, fintech solution called OG Pay. It's at OGPay.com. Someone can very easily on board there in a matter of like 30 seconds, have their account open. It's um, It has a KYT, a KYC, AML, and in the crypto, it has a KYT. That's know your transaction layer to it. It all happens in the background. So it's seamless for the user um, where someone can load money into the platform. They can instantly load when they sign up uh, from their checking account by using their debit card. So they get an instant load money onto the platform. Um, they can start earning reward decks. It's equivalent to 2% of whatever monies they have in their wallet, APY. And then, and then they um, 
can start using it. So they can they can do things like every single day, we have things around here called our OG pay day. Mm -hmm. And what's our OG pay day look like? For me, I use I, I use it. My my family uses it, and everybody in this in this firm of ours uses it because it's a great way to be able to um, reinvent, sort of use your money in a new way. It's yeah. a great way to reimagine, and we believe that we're transforming, like Uber transformed something as simple as how to take a ride. OG pays transforming for people how to use their their money, and then with cryptocurrencies. Um, just the ability um, to be able to instantly settle a, 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 a crypto transaction and also be responsible about settling the crypto transaction. You know, if you if you have a thousand dollars in crypto profits on OG pay in Bitcoin mm -hmm. and you want to go buy your wife something nice with the profits, well, in OG pay. You can absolutely sell it instantly, that a portion of that money, of that crypto, that profit. You can sell it instantly and you can settle it into a mobile wallet, into cash instantly. Or you can settle it onto a virtual or a physical debit card instantly. And then you can just go buy your wife the new pair of shoes. Or That's whatever, awesome. Right? So it's instant. But it also has to be done responsibly because as soon as you do that and you take profits, then you could very well have a short-term or long-term capital gains liability yes. that you right. have to pay. So if, you, if you're going to take a thousand bucks out, you might have, you know, you might only actually get the value of 700 of it because you might have to give, you know, 300 of it to Caesar, give unto Caesar what Caesar's, right? That's right. Yeah. So, so OG pay lets people know that, Hey, the pop-up comes up and says, Hey, you know, you're, you're selling profit. You may have, you know, get with your tax advisor. You may have uh, to pay taxes on taking these profits. Um, Things like that are really important. So we've tried to be thoughtfully considerate of all the regulatory environments and all that. We operate in the United States. That's the other thing. We're not we're not trying to go offshore to some crazy place so we can do crazy things in the crypto space. Mm -hmm. That's not the point of it either. So we have all of our liquidity is maintained across a a, a pool of of, of, uh, of liquidity partnerships, and we operate our crypto business operates in the OTC markets. It does not operate. We don't have relationships with like Coinbase or these others, so we don't we don't pull our liquidity from fragmented retail-based liquidity. We have primary and agency-level desk OTC contracts that we use to get our liquidity. So that's how we can put liquidity on deck to be able to settle instantly these crypto transactions. So we have some technology behind that, and some patents. Original Digital Corporation has some patents filed on these particular technologies and these um, ways of doing things. Um, related to liquidity and so forth. So uh, we're very enthusiastic about OG Pay. It operates in multiple countries, multiple languages. It has instant conversion on the FX um, without any foreign exchange fees. So you can convert the whole platform to Euro or the whole platform to NARA or RAND yeah. if you're in South Africa, I mean, whatever. Um, and it's getting, it's getting better and better. I mean, I think the latest version added all the QR code technology to us. You can just scan QR codes. Um, and the other cool thing about OG Pay that I really like about it, frankly, doesn't have anything to do with the individual mobile wallet. I mean, that's that's exciting. Somebody just got it, right? It's yeah. it's because it's, it's cool. But um, for me, at the business level, OG Pay just um, launched its beta three or four months ago, five months ago of its OG Pay merchant services. Nice. And I'm extremely enthusiastic about that because when I go to my dry cleaner or something and I scan, I just pay OG pay with my OG pay wallet and my bills a hundred bucks. And that merchant, my dry cleaner has an OG pay merchant wallet and I could just pay him for those services wallet to wallet. Nice. Yeah. And then he doesn't have to pay 3% um, of merchant fees because it's not going through it's merchant. not going through the rails. It's not going through a merchant gateway. It doesn't have to worry about mids and balancing and all that. It just it was a hundred bucks. I just sent him a hundred bucks from my wallet to his merchant wallet, and I saved him three bucks. Yeah. I mean, so from a an efficiency point of view, that's sort of the DeFi model that matters, I call it, because that's where you can really show where someone can save money 
and a business, a merchant, a small and medium sized business can save money through OG pays merchant services uh, offering. So, so do you think this is going to disrupt in the, in the merchant services then? I mean, as far as I, yeah, I, I think it has the op opportunity to, I mean, there, look, there are companies, you could go to crypto.com, you could go to these different places and, and they'll give you a card and yep. you could just swipe the visa card. And then you're doing that with your crypto, but people do that mindlessly without understanding what are the fees associated with that? How much of my crypto did I have to actually just give up right. to do that yeah. oh, on yeah. this visa card, right? And where's that card issued? Where's the card from mm -hmm. is, is another thing. And then the other pieces, what I really like about those folks at ODC and how they did OG Pay, I really like how they did the um, security layer because the, the cards are delinked from the mobile wallet, from the cash. So you can keep like I keep like five bucks in my OG pay uh, virtual visa card and, and maybe 40 cents in my physical card. So if mm -hmm. I ever lost my wallet or my physical card, nobody can steal money. But if, if if I lost my wallet and my physical card for my my debit card for my bank is count is there, I have all my money there. Oh, yeah. Somebody can just swipe and push credit. And, and they can take my money and it's extremely inconvenient. Now, the, you know, granted the bank and the, and visa, they're, they're all going to fix it. You're going to get your money back. It, you're not going to lose the money that somebody used when they took your stuff, yep. but you're going to be inconvenienced and out the money until they fix it. So with this model, uh, where they have 40 cents and then the cards no good to them. And yep. as soon as I lose it, I can shut it off in OG pay. I can just turn the cards on and off based on, I, I lost my wallet and my card, I turn it off, suspend it. It's that instantly. Now, the cool thing about that is when I want to use the visa though, when I want to use that, I just instantly say, hey, move 200 bucks to the visa. I'm buying people lunch. Nice. And yep. it does. And then I'm done. Yep. Right? So I don't have to, I don't have to and with, which is why I believe OG Pay. Yes, I think it's going to be disruptive. And yes, I believe it's going to be disruptive in OG Pay merchant services. But I also believe it's going to be transformative, like Uber was in transportation. I think it's going to transform how merchants think about how they take payments. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to, which is a simple thing, but so is taking a ride is a simple thing. Right. And I think it's going to transform how people, individuals, consumers, me, you and me, um, think about um, how we use our money every day. Yeah. Well, that was that was one of the things I was always talking to uh, Daryl, other people I knew in the in the space. I was like, well, how, I mean, okay, it's great that we we have this crypto and we have whatever, but how do we how do we use it? Like, I mean, how, how are you ever going to be able to use a card or a? I mean, how are you going to use it like money? You know, whatever. And then he's like, well, you, you got to see OG Pay what they're doing. It's brilliant. I mean, that's why I wanted to bring you on because I've been looking for people. I've talked to a lot of people uh, who who wanted to talk about NFTs, crypto, whatever else. But after talking to Daryl and some people, I wanted to have you on. It's, this has been some of the best. I mean, as far as explaining it goes, this, I mean, I've learned a lot uh, just during this call. So a lot of these were my questions like, okay, I mean, maybe in a greedy way. <laughs> like, I want to know this. I want to understand this information. But I understand. I know that without a doubt, my audience gained a lot from this. Um, and obviously there's a learning curve and there's more education uh, that we have. Th this was probably just scratching the surface. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure there's, it, you can go deeper and, and whatever else, but I like to learn at the basic levels and build and build off of that, which I think is what we've, we've accomplished here. So, and I know you got to get ready to run here, but so I appreciate you coming on. So, Give us the websites real quick, uh, the OG Pay and the other, the OG uh, 2D as well. Okay, yeah, you're right. It is it is a learning curve. I'm still on it myself. Um, yep. I mean, <laughs> I, I would if you ask me many more questions, I'm going to have to hit the bat phone and ask somebody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the OG Pay is ogpay.com. Okay. And if you go, uh, if, if someone wanted to download the uh, the app on their phone, they uh, the, the app store or the place Google Play Store, they would just go to that store and they would just type OG Pay, O G P A Y, mm -hmm. um, and they'll find the wallets there. They can put them on their phones. Um, 
it's good to have an account first set up. So OGPay.com on your phone or on your computer or whatever, set up your account, get yourself established, and then just use that same username and password when you open up the app. Yeah. It's a lot easier that way. Um, and then uh, original um, OG2D, original mm -hmm. to digital, uh, OG2D.com for the NFT uh, marketplace is uh, oh. where they'll find all the, um, the NFTs and the offerings that are there. Well, I, again, I appreciate you coming on, uh, Paul, and, and I know you're busy and uh, you got a lot of things going on. And so, again, Paul Caldwell, um, Caldwell of Soames, CEO. And, um, again, I really appreciate you coming on and, and educating my my crew here uh, and, and following of, great. of this as well. So you guys have a good rest of the day, though. All right. Appreciate you, Josh. Take care. Thanks, Paul. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah.